Hi, this is Rhonda Degas with LifePotentialDevelopments.com, international NLP trainer, coach, columnist, and author of How to Heal from Years of Criticism, Insults, Abuse, and Rejection. With me is Roger Ellerton, a well-respected NLP trainer, coach, speaker, management consultant, and author of five NLP books. This is the fourth in the series of discussions with Roger about his newest book, Win-Win Influence, How to Enhance Your Personal and Business Relationships with NLP. Welcome, Roger. Hi, Ron. It's great to see you again. Always a pleasure. In our last interview, Roger, we discussed Chapter 4 of your book, which covered preparing in advance for the interview, negotiation, sales opportunity, and even a, a family meeting, <laughs> which we all have those ones. So in your next chapter in your book, it's titled uh, Create a Space of Trust and Safety. So perhaps you can uh, you know, share or tell with our, our uh, viewers what you mean by this and highlight maybe a few key points. Okay, great. Thanks, Rhonda. Well, in the previous chapters, uh, we discussed uh, having some understanding of the person's need, uh, an understanding of how they experience the world, that they may be visual, auditory, uh, kinesthetic, we also talked about a meta program, uh, external, external, internal, external, and, uh, and those are, are ideas that we pulled together from our previous experience with these people. Now we're both to meet them, and of course we want to verify that, that the needs are as we think they are, and, and uh, how they experience the world are as we think they are. And the only way we can do this is, is if we can engage them in a conversation in which uh, both of us really feel safe. And and, uh, and trust the other person, and uh, and I'd say that we, you know uh, we'll, we're going to do the best we can to create that environment. And in my book, I, I've got a number of uh, suggestions on how we can go about that. I thought uh, today we could probably talk about two of them. Uh, one, of course, the four, and you hear that quite often uh, with regard to NLP. And uh, and the other is of course paying attention, paying attention to the other person. So with report with report. Uh, one of the easiest ways to, to establish rapport with somebody else is, is actually to, to match them. Uh, what I mean by that, and you well know, uh, you match their, their body language, their physiology, uh, their tone of voice, uh, the words they use, and, and in fact, uh, may, I might suggest to uh, 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 viewers to actually think of a time when you didn't want to have a conversation with somebody, and what was going on in your mind at that time. And I would suggest you probably thought, well, they're sitting down. I'm not going to sit down. I'm not going to be like them in any way. Uh, or I'm not going to talk to them in the same type, type of voice. And uh, and what we've learned from NLP is, is, yeah, that's a great way to mismatch a person and, and to not engage in, a, in an open conversation. And, and the opposite is, of course, is to match them, to take on a similar body language, to take on a similar tone of voice, use similar words. And in fact, uh, before I ask you uh, to help me on this, uh, I just like our, our viewers to think, what would happen, and you yourself, if you were at a restaurant with a whole bunch of friends, maybe uh, four to eight friends, and, and you're all sitting around the table, and, and I'm there with you, and then I decide to stand up to eat my meal. In other words, I'm standing, holding my plate in front of me uh, as I eat my meal. How would you feel about being, being in a conversation with me around the table at this time? I would suspect there's a bit of a disconnect. Yeah, there would be, and of course, then of course, my first response would be, you know, are you feeling okay? Is there something going on with you? Because because it's such a different thing for somebody to do to stand up while they're eating, my thoughts would okay. How do I bring him back with us? Because obviously he's disconnected from us as well, and Absolutely. you know, what can I do to create, as you say in your book, create that safe environment where you would feel comfortable to sit down and have your meal you know instead of standing up on the ready for the run <laughs> yeah. exactly exactly so there's some sort of disconnect between us if i would do that mm -hmm. and the same thing is if i were to talk in a loud voice or, or use different words that they you, and you in fact that, that when i say that i'm, I'm thinking uh Think of, of a really close friend. If a close friend starts using a, a certain word, maybe awesome, uh, before long you, you're using it too because you want to be like that person. Uh, and of course we say in NLP, uh, the more we're like the other person, the more we like that person. And that's about establishing this openness and so forth. 
you know, so I just wonder if you had any other thoughts about matching in your experience. Well, uh, besides the actual, you know, words, like the awesome words, it also could be the speed at which somebody speaks because somebody that's highly visual may speak extremely quickly where I may speak a little slower. So if I want to be more like them or keep up with them, then I may want to actually increase the speed in which I speak. I might not be able to speak as fast, but the fast mm -hmm. as I can, that my brain Absolutely. will allow me to, <laughs> to be able to keep up with them would be another way of matching. Absolutely. So in other words, you're suggesting that people need to be flexible. Oh, absolutely, yeah, because... And, and meet them in their model of the world. And if we do that, we can open up this possibility of, of establishing rapport and openness, etc. And as we're talking, I'm thinking, uh, in my book, I, I have a couple of references. A lot of people might say, well, does this really work? And I, I've referenced a couple of sources. And, and there's one uh, where they had a buyer-seller situation. And uh, in, in that situation, uh, for the people who match, they actually uh, obtained a sale, and I think it was about 67% of the time. Whereas uh, in another group where they were not matching, I think that they only got a sale about 12% of the time. So does it work? Absolutely. And it's not just about sales. It's about, about having a conversation with your spouse, about your family member, having a conversation at work with a co-worker. Uh, because in a way, we're selling all the time. We're selling our ideas, our thoughts, uh, having people buy into us. Uh, so, so it's not just a, a total sales situation. Well, you did give a you did give a good example. You did give a good example in your book about the sales situation where it was a mismatch too, and you know when the the seller was trying to sell that car, and the person that was coming in was kinesthetic and he was very visual, and how it wasn't working. So you created this dialogue of an example, which really ended with the person going to another dealer, but the salesperson had absolutely no idea what he did wrong. So I think it's a, yeah, I think it's a really good point that when you create those, I like the way you do that in your book because you give these examples that people can understand and, and see for themselves and, and experience it in a way that, you know, oh yes, now I can understand when I talk to that person why it didn't work. Absolutely. And, and, and that example, as you reminded me of it, is a really good example of we, we attempt to engage people from our perspective. So if I'm visual, I'm going to present things in a visual way. And we need to be flexible and actually talk to the person in their language, from their model of the world. So I was also thinking, uh, of course, uh, one of the things in NLP that's very important is paying attention or sense of acuity. And, and that ties in very, very importantly because we, we pay attention to the to, is this person visual or are they kinesthetic? <clears throat> it really tend to be in very internal or external or, or potentially uh, towards or away from. Someone towards wants to achieve, wants to attain, get. Someone who's away from is looking for something that's going to fix something, going to get rid of something. So we need to pay attention. And I thought uh, also we could talk about sensory acuity in terms of not just uh, so I can model them so, or so I match them, but also if I'm engaging somebody and all of a sudden I notice they're massaging their neck or maybe they're just stroking their face in some way or perhaps playing with your hair. I, I'm sure you've seen people do this. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes people go, or their cheeks will pop out and they'll blow out. Uh, this quite often is a sign that they're either embarrassed or stressed, under stress. And I'd suggest at that point of time what you need to do is you need to think, wait a minute. Is it possible that they're embarrassed or under stress? If they are, what can I do? How did this happen? And perhaps maybe I just need to back off. I've been pushing them too hard, or I need to just call a break and say, hey, why don't we take a break? Why don't we continue this tomorrow or next week? And, and in other words, because I could push it. If, if they're embarrassed or, or they're stressed, I could push it so we get a deal, but it's not a win-win deal. It's going to last. Right. And be beneficial to the two of us. Yeah, and you actually, in your book, in Chapter 5, you give some exercise to, to actually for the reader to experience it and try it for themselves so that they can understand and, and get a handle of the actual process and, and, and see the results that they may have uh, doing this process and how it can work in their life. So I think that's a really good thing to do is not just to read about it or and listen to us or, or watch us us demonstrating you know like these types of things 
but to actually experience it for themselves so they can really you know know how to do that and uh, so I think that's that's a good idea you know read chapter 5 in the book because it really gives you some good examples of references and stuff and uh, doing it for yourself so thanks for watching and to listen to more discussions in this series search out the win-win influence thanks for coming Roger my pleasure see you again okay talk soon yeah